Hi everyone, my name is King IV and this is a custom ACL workshop. I decided to do something a little bit different. Uh, I often like looking at the forum, trying occasionally answer the questions, but not too often. Uh, but I came across this one particular question uh, asked by Jane Hovland. I apologize if I said that incorrectly. And this question basically asks, uh, I say I have two tables. One has dates. Uh, they both have dates and values. And what I want to do is take the table one as primary and then look for the nearest date in table two and then add add that amount, whatever the value is. So the example they gave here is if you look at this first record, it's November 11th, 2015. is $100. And then we have table two. So the nearest one here would be December 1st, 2015, and it's $200 because that's closer than December 13th, 2015, which is $150. So then uh, logically, uh, you, or let's see what, the, the, you, you would add the 100 and the 200 together. And if you look at the second record, you would add then the 50 and the 150. And then it would look like this new table with this new amount. So I'm going, I've already written a script to attempt to a answer this question. I'm going to attempt to answer, I've thought about it in a number of different ways, but this is just one of the approaches and obviously you can modify, try different, try, append it and uh, make it more efficient as well. Uh, but I found that it, it worked. So I've mocked up this data set and I just created some random dates you'll see here. I can also post a link if uh, people are interested in this data set, but it's nothing too complicated. I have list one and list two. And there's 100 records in each one. And I have amounts and dates here, so nothing too complicated. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out. So in this script, I have basically I have two scripts here. Uh, the first one, basically, right here, just imports the data. So you can have any data set that you want, but this is just an example that I used. Imports the data sets, imports the dates as dates, imports the amounts as numeric. Nothing complicated here. Even though the data is already sorted uh, based off how I calculate it, I find it's good to sort ahead of time. And to be honest, when I when I did this, it actually didn't really matter uh, because I approached it in a different way than I originally thought. Uh, but it is uh, still useful if you're going to apply it, your analysis in another way just to sort the data, just so that you can apply that logic and take advantage of the, the fact that the data is sorted. And then here's where the magic starts happening. Here I'm going to loop through the first date table, one record at a time. So here I have the sorted date table. I have count, which will tell me the number of records. And then I start the counter at one. And then here I have Vmax count one. So count one will be the, the number of records uh, because of this, this count function. And then here I'm going to loop through B date till the V counter is, while the V counter is less than or equal to Vmax. So basically, when when uh, v counter is greater than v max or not less than or equal to v max, then it will stop running. So that's good. So this is also where the magic continues. This first part, don't worry about this first part. We'll come back to it. So here I have the first date table, and then I'm gonna extract it to this first temp table. And uh, here I'm gonna go if the record number is equal to the v counter which means that one record at a time as i loop through first time i'm going to run through it's going to be record one second time i'm going to run through it's going to be record two uh extract that to a table called temp and then locate record one so what locate uh record one is uh it basically isolates that first record and since this table is only one record it doesn't really matter technically i could did locate uh uh, v counter, but you'll see later on why I did this approach and it may be more efficient just to do the locate record on v counter But you'll see later on why I did it I isolate for that one record and then as soon as I say v date is equal to date It knows exactly what record it's gonna what date it's gonna pull and some may argue that you probably don't need the locate record one because there's only one record but regardless you can modify it, adjust it as you see fit and then what I have next is I have the second table and then here I'm going to calculate a variance so this v date is basically going to save a date to this to this variable and I'm going to go date minus v date right so take basically take the variance between uh, those two right so uh, every record every date two 
is going to have uh, this uh, basically a variance between the date from the record I isolated and this date or this date minus the record I isolated. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to sort it based off the absolute value of this variance. Technically, like I did absolute value up here and then sort it that way. And that might be a little bit more efficient. Obviously, you can take a look and modify. And the reason why I did the absolute value and sort it ascending is that, for example, what I don't want to happen is that if I just sort it ascending without the absolute value, then minus five is going to come before three. But that's not what they want. They want closest to that date. So closest to that date means closest to zero. So there, when I sort it ascending, it's going to sort it, it's going to treat the negatives and positives in the same way. And it's going to sort it closest to zero since absolute values start with start the closest value to zero is zero or the lowest value is zero. And then I'm going to extract that to this table called temp sort. Technically, I could have data uh, index and sort it that way, but uh, if I like this way just so I can see it. And then I'm going to locate record one. So I'm going to locate the first record, which is the closest record to that particular date. Obviously, if they're tied, then it's only going to pick up the first record of the tie, but uh, obviously it's not perfect and you can take that into consideration if you want and then here I'm going to isolate because I've isolated that first record I'm going to isolate the amount and the date from from that from that record and Don't worry about the fact that I've changed use v date multiple times technically I shouldn't be but it doesn't really matter because I've already extracted and taken the values I wanted from that record technically it would change it up here But it's not that big a deal because I've already extracted it to this via this sort and then I'm going to open up the open temp uh, which is the one record that i looped through i'm going to extract it so i'm going to take the original data field take them out i could have did all uh, but i like doing in this method and then i'm going to take the v amount which is the amount from the second table the closest record i'm going to save that as amount two i'm going to take the date and call that date two and then combine it so i didn't do the addition i'm sure someone else can i just like seeing it so you can see the fact and then here i'm going to do v counter equals v counter plus one so i'm going to loop through the second record and then what i did here you'll notice here i have this uh percent sign via pen uh if you haven't checked out my other videos i recommend that you check those out to understand what's happening here but essentially what i'm saying here is if it's the first record leave it blank which means that just extract it save over the table that existed and if it's not equal to one which means it's not the first record i want to append it uh then I can uh, then I'm gonna put the word append at the end, which is going to allow me to build upon it. So taking that into consideration, let's go ahead and run it. So it's gonna take a minute to run. So there are probably some optimization opportunities, especially if you have a really large data set, like for example, doing the absolute value instead of doing the absolute value in the defined field calculation as opposed to in the sort. So the sort doesn't have to do these calculations. But what you'll have here is this date one combined. So you'll see here this is the first date field and the amount and the amount two from the second record. And you'll see this is the perfect match. And if I go to the second data set, you'll see there here, there is a January 1st, 2012. Let's go down something harder. Uh, let's go, for example, uh, April 28th, 2012. And here it's going to be matched up to April 30th, 20, uh, 2012. So which is two days difference. So if I go down here, uh, the potential candidates, obviously I'm gonna look above and below uh, because April 30th is after, I'm gonna look above. And you'll see that the 28th is actually two is two, only two days away from the 30th as opposed to five days away from the 23rd. So it's gonna pick up this record and loop through it. So hopefully, Jan, if I'm saying your name correctly, uh, it answers your question. If you have any other questions or comments, or if anyone else has any questions or comments or questions that they want me to answer, I love doing these challenges and uh, trying to answer these questions in a little bit more of an interactive, uh, question-oriented, video-oriented format. So if any questions, leave it in the comment section below. I'll be scanning the forums um, frequently and uh, try to answer these questions in this format if people do enjoy it. if you do enjoy it uh, give it a thumbs up so I can get that feedback and don't forget to subscribe and I look forward to speaking to you next time thank you